Alright guys, so I am on my way home from the trek. I've got about two hours to kill and so I decided that I want to go on a rant a little bit. And what we're going to rant about today is the biggest problem that I feel like we have as far as aftermarket parts go and aftermarket companies and that is lack of data. We do not get enough data when parts are released. We don't know enough about the parts that we're trying to buy and it's just an ongoing problem that frankly I don't think it's going to be solved. I don't think anybody's going to fix it and to be honest I do understand why but I just want to talk about it in this video. You know feel free to leave a comment down below based on your experience or your thoughts and we can keep the conversation going but yeah this is just something that has been heavy on my mind for a while and I decided I wanted to make a video on it so hopefully you guys enjoy. Now, as always, for everybody that's new to the channel, I create these videos to help keep you updated on the latest developments in our community, as well as discuss technical topics so that we have a better understanding of how our engines work. So if you're interested in more videos like that, be sure to subscribe because there will be a lot more coming out in the future. So like I said, I feel like the biggest problem that we have is a lack of data when parts are released. Let me know if you guys feel the same way because Nothing has been released recently, definitely for the B-58. I'm just seeing parts being announced and released without any real data to support what's being claimed by the companies. And I do try to take pride in creating videos and being as early as possible to present new information to you guys, but I really don't have a lot of information to share. You know, if somebody releases a new turbo or a new fuel system upgrade, the first question I always get is, how does it compare to XYZ? Is it going to be more reliable? Is it going to be worth it? Do you think that this will make 700 horsepower or this and that? And I don't know because they didn't release any data for it. You know, we're not seeing dynos, we're not seeing flow rates, we're not seeing any real information that can confirm what the limits of these systems are. And it's extremely frustrating for me just as somebody creating content because I want to know just as bad as you guys. But when you ask me the questions and I'm thinking, you know, this part was just released a week ago, like how would I know that? Well, the answer is I shouldn't have to know that. The companies should be releasing that information to answer these questions for you guys. And so I completely understand. It's just one of those things where if you're going to be spending hundreds if not thousands of dollars, you wanna know that the part is going to do what you want it to do. You're not gonna feel like it's a waste of money. You're not gonna turn around and realize that there's a completely better option on the market, something better value. So, you know, you guys are just being consumers. You know, you're asking for information to make an educated decision when you're purchasing a product. And it's just, it is what it is. We don't get that information nowadays. Now, the only thing I will say is I understand why. And talking with a lot of companies, they shared their feedback on why this isn't something that a lot of them focus on. Because for example, again, if you're releasing a turbo, a lot of people want to see the spec sheet so they can understand the flow rates, which can help you understand the horsepower potential. Because if you guys don't know, typically when a turbo is rated for a certain amount of horsepower, they basically just take the flow rate, multiply it by 10, and that's the horsepower. So if it's 50 pounds per minute, they rate it for 500 horsepower. So a lot of people are hoping that they can see these charts to understand the efficiency of the turbo and where it maxes out. But I can guarantee you that no company selling a hybrid turbo for $2,000 is going to spend the extra money to go through all that testing and figure out what the flow chart looks like. It's an extremely expensive process. And even though they're making good money, all that money is typically going into R&D. So the second gen turbo and the third gen turbo and all these other options can come out. So they're trying to focus on basically creating products that work, but they're not able to do all the testing for everything that we want to see because a lot of people don't even know how to read these charts. They don't know how to translate the data. What are they going to say? I want to see real world performance. I want to see what it does. And now I think another thing to think about is imagine if a company released a turbo or a fuel system upgrade and they put it on their R&D test car and went and broke a record. Oh, I just put this turbo on my Gen 1 340i and it ran a 7.9 quarter mile. It's the fastest quarter mile ever. Well, if nobody ever hit that time again, what would we think? They were lying. They did secret mods. They put nitrous on the car. It's not real world numbers. They have mods they're not talking about. 
nobody's gotten close to this, so it's basically false advertising. So what do they do? Okay, we'll let customers buy it and create their own numbers, and then other people can go off of that. They'll get their own dinos, they'll take it to the drag strip, and basically the community will kind of fuel the rest of the community's questions and everything that they're trying to understand. Except most people buy your product and all they do is daily drive it to work and maybe floor it from a stoplight every other Saturday. So now you're not getting dyno numbers, you're not getting drag strip numbers. So what do you do? Okay, I'll sponsor a couple people. I'll pay two or three people to put this on their car, but the only reason why we're paying them or giving them parts for a discounted rate, free, whatever, is in return, they will provide those numbers. They have to get on the dyno, they have to take it to the drag strip, they have to publish so many posts, you know, whatever, to help us get the information out there so people know what our product's capable of. Then they do it and everybody says, oh, well, the car's sponsored, they can only say good things. Those aren't real, I wanna see somebody else. And it's just like a never ending cycle. And I mean, let's be honest, most people that are asking for all these numbers never actually get the numbers on their own car. There are so many people that want to know the performance of their car and where it lands, but all they do is kind of street log and tune. They never hit a dyno, they never hit a drag strip, they might roll race a couple friends, and that's pretty much it. You know, and that's just kind of how it works. So it's it's a never ending rat race for these aftermarket card companies in a lot of cases. Another thing to think about is if I put the turbo on my car with port injection and an upgraded fuel system, full E85 and all this stuff, what kind of questions am I gonna get? What does it do without port? What does it do on 93 pump gas? What does it do on 91 like piss octane from California? Everybody's going to have a different setup that they want to have validated. Can it make more power with just a high pressure fuel pump? You know, is it worth upgrading the fuel pump? Which fuel pump should I run? How much power can I expect on an ethanol mix, E30, E40, E50? And the questions are just never going to end. And so, I mean, I understand that this is an expectation from aftermarket parts companies, but that's just kind of the world we live in now, you know? Most companies are literally two or three guys at most that are putting these parts and designs together because they have a passion for it. They aren't these huge conglomerate companies that can afford to do all of this testing and data collection before they release a product. And it's unfortunate, you know, it's something that I understand that the community would ask for, but it's just not something that I would expect anytime soon. So hopefully times change, hopefully these things get a little bit cheaper and you know, hopefully the community can understand what it takes to provide that kind of data because ultimately it is a lot of work for these guys. And if they take an extra six months to release it and they charge you an extra 30% for all of the testing and data that they provided, are they really gonna make more money? Is it really gonna drive more sales? Absolutely not, because people are buying products without the data. They are selling out on pre-orders just with an announcement that a product's coming soon. So there's no real motivation for them to go out of their way to update their systems and how they operate to continue gathering more data before releasing products. But yeah, let me know what you guys think. I just wanted to rant about this for a little bit. So again, feel free to leave a comment. We can keep the conversation going. But that's going to be it for this video. So thank you guys for watching and I hope this helps. And if you have any other questions or comments, leave them down below.